Houdini 21 sneak peek shows some of the most realistic liquid sims we've ever seen. A new add-on that blends meshes together seamlessly in Unreal Engine, and Google's Genie 3 lets you generate entire interactive worlds from a single text prompt. It's Motion Mondays, and let's take a live look at a motion designer who just had a client ask him if he could just do one more small revision. After what feels like forever, waiting and watching those satisfying preview videos, Tortalervic's Mesh Blend plugin for Unreal Engine is finally here, and it's aptly named, lets you blend any mesh with any other mesh, including landscapes, static meshes, or skeletal meshes. This thing operates as a global post-process shader and works in real time, even with dynamically spawned objects, and it supports all the good stuff, opaque materials, nanite, nanite displacement, and decals. Now, it's not exactly cheap. Personal licenses start at $119 over at the Fab Store. But if you're doing a lot of world building inside of Unreal Engine, this looks like a pretty handy tool to have in your toolkit. And speaking of handy tools, AE Scripts and AE Plugins just dropped control groups, which basically scratches that layer groups itch we all have been having inside of After Effects. This plugin lets you streamline those repetitive tasks by grouping layers or locations with keyboard shortcuts so you can navigate your compositions without losing Using your mind. You can create up to 100 control groups with just 10 base keys, which is pretty clever. And instead of manually reselecting layers or hunting through compositions over and over, you just hit your shortcut keys and boom, instant navigation and restoration of your previous selections. And the timing for this couldn't be better since over at AE Scripts and AE Plugins, they're running their last week of summer sales, 25% off featured authors. So control groups is one of those quality of life improvements that'll save you from headaches when you're deep, deep within a complex comp. Now for a quick school motion news dump, we recently just launched quarterly pricing for our all access program. You'll get unlimited access to all of our courses, unlimited critique, verified credentials, community access, monthly portfolio reviews, and live workshops. We know some people want that quarterly flexibility instead of committing to the full year, so there you go. And speaking of all access benefits, we've got a very special live workshop this Thursday, August 14th, with PJ Richardson from Laundry Studio. Now, the one question I constantly get is, how do we actually use AI in real production workflows? And PJ is gonna be breaking down exactly how Laundry integrates AI into their process. So this is the kind of insider knowledge you just can't get anywhere else. We've also got a bunch of new courses coming down the pike, Rive Academy 2, a new After Effects class, Unreal for broadcast designers, Substance Painter, and a lot more. So if you're looking to level up your skills, there's never been a better time to jump in and start learning with our awesome community. To learn more about All Access, you can head on over to our website. Link is in the description. So it's been the trend every week brings some new crazy AI thing, and this time Google introduced Genie 3, which lets you generate entire worlds, and I mean entire worlds, like you can navigate around them like game levels. It can generate multiple minutes of interactive 3D environments at 720p resolution, which is a massive jump from Genie 2's limitation of just 10 to 20 seconds. And here's the big thing, it actually features promptable world events, so you can even use prompts to change the generated world on the fly. It maintains consistency too, so if you paint on a wall and you leave that room and you come back, the paint's still there. It's pretty incredible. So you might be wondering, how do they do this? You gotta remember, Google has products like Google Earth where they've literally scanned the entire surface of the Earth from their satellites, plus Google Street View data. They basically have the entire world mapped out, which is kind of creepy. But one of the wildest examples shows generated drone footage where you can take control of the drone camera in mid-flight. So. Yeah, we went from generating an image of seven-fingered people, and now you can generate an entire 3D world that you can move through. Pace of AI development is just crazy right now. The Lovey Awards released their 2025 industry report focusing on Europe, and it's always interesting to get perspectives beyond our US-based bubble here. The findings were kind of a downer, 57% of respondents said the industry is struggling or in decline. One key insight was how different 
Europe's approach is compared to here in America. We're very unregulated with a lot of risk taking, while European organizations are more measured with innovation and slower adoption with stricter regulation. The Wall Street Journal found that only four of the world's top 50 tech companies are European. That gap is pretty telling. Interestingly though, while 40% called AI transformational and almost 50% said it significantly impacts their work, 66% of leaders see AI as a challenge. Now here's something that surprised me, younger, less experienced employees are actually more resistant to AI, preferring to master job basics first. And you'd think maybe younger generations would be the first ones to embrace it more, but maybe because they have more to lose since they're just starting their careers, that kind of makes sense. Speaking of AI anxiety, here's an AI actually trying to help you find jobs instead of helping you uh, lose them. Indie AI is great for independent motion designers looking to use AI for job searching. It quietly discovers new opportunities through your existing network via a Chrome extension. The quietly part sounds slightly creepy, but maybe it's useful. The tool integrates with Contra Pro and scans your professional network to identify projects that align with your specific skills and experience. So no longer do you have to kind of sip through relevant job posting. It helps you tap into your existing connections and figure out where the new projects are and build new relationships with clients and colleagues over time. Now for some amazing work from around the interwebs. First up, Really great new opening tiles for Wednesday season two by Filmograph. My buddy James Ramirez worked on this with the team, said they were using Cinema 4D, Maya, and Redshift. The lightning effects are super cool. Camera works awesome. Textures super detailed. Hopefully the show lives up to the season one hype. Next, Seth Worley sat down with Corridor Digital to chat about VFX in his new film that came out August 6th. They discussed how they use Magic Bullet, Redshift, and Cinema 4D in the film, plus critiqued other movie VFX. It's super awesome to see how Seth's journey kind of culminated in his big break. Congrats to him and the Red Giant Max on family he's been a part of for so long. Next up, Frame dropped some awesome work that I'm always a sucker for. We got great sims, great composition, lighting, animation, materials. Everything looks completely tactile and shows the power of just being excellent at composition, animation, color, and design in 3D can really make a project sing. Finally, up and coming studio Buck created this sick piece for Riot Games League of Legends MSI. And I love the 2D cell VFX, the text animation, the fonts growing with all that energy and the action line effects, super clean work, exactly the type of stuff you'd expect from Buck. Now onto our big headline that's been all over the internet last week, Houdini 21's sneak peek video, and it's a massive update. KeenFX tools are now production ready with enhanced auto rigging capabilities and facial rig creation. They also added new muscle and organic tissue solvers, but the real showstopper here is the material point method or MPM solver updates. The MPM now has debris emission and MPM surface that creates meshes with UV preservation. The simulations like this one right here looks completely realistic. And this Sims actually been making the rounds lately. You see all the debris mixing, got that whipped cream. Oh my gosh, it's making me hungry just looking at it. Now onto our School of Motion student of the week, Don Dixon from Plano, Texas. He's a motion designer and senior animator for feature films who created this really cool Rive piece where you can hover over and the character changes states and the eyes even follow your cursor around. Don had a really great testimonial that resonated with me. He said, he's here to prove that you can teach an old dog new tricks. He's thoroughly enjoyed embarking on school of motion courses, throwing ego aside and really learning and growing. And one of his favorite things about the animation community is the generosity when it comes to learning and teaching, remembering that you have to throw down that ladder once you make it up to a certain mountaintop. He's looking forward to continuing to learn new things and applying them to new projects in the near and distant future. You can check out more of Don's work at scribcreative.com. He's got a big variety of projects he's worked on. Congrats to Don and congrats to committing to keep on learning. So we're using more and more 3D apps all the time. And one of the big struggles is keeping consistency between these apps. When you export files, things like materials don't necessarily always transfer properly. And that's why we have standards like USDZ and open PBR for file formats and materials, but there hasn't been anything for volumetric effects until now. 
The Academy Software Foundation just announced Open PBR Volume, a collaboration between Autodesk and SideFX. And this is gonna create consistency for volumetric shading between different apps, explosions, cloud, smoke, fire. Depending on which app you're in, these volume effects might look completely different. That's a big problem for artists moving assets around all these different apps. So what this is gonna do is hopefully ensure seamless asset exchange between studios, authoring tools and renderers while maintaining a familiar interface for artists. So open PBR volume is a pretty big deal for maintaining visual consistency across pipelines using volumes. Now here's a really cool Blender add-on called Simply Trails that does exactly what it sounds like. It creates motion trails on mesh and curve objects, it lets you quickly add dynamic, really cool appealing motion trails to animation, enhancing that sense of motion and adding that visual interest. The tool includes smooth fading, wind effects, organic movements, and momentum, all designed to create complex and realistic trail effects with super smooth playback. It comes with ready to use assets for quick results, which is always appreciated when you need to do things fast. I don't think you have any idea how fast I really am. I'm fast as boy. <laughs> now I'm always a sucker for motion smears, so this looks like a super cool addition for any Blender user. You can grab it over on Super Hive Market for the low cost of eight bucks. Links in the description. And finally, a little roundup of some events happening over the next few months. First off is Off Montreal. If you've always wanted to go to Off, but you can never quite make it over to Barcelona, well, here is your chance. It's their first event in Montreal, and it's happening September 8th through the 9th. I hear nothing but good things about Off. Hope to make it to one these days, but if you're in the area, you should definitely check it out. Next up, Safe Space LA has their fourth meetup in LA on August 21st, put on by the great folks at Laundry and people like PJ Richardson. They're excited to have Marcel Zuhl from State present their awesome work. You can get your free ticket over on Eventbrite, but note they have limited parking in LA. Everyone likes to drive a car, so get there early. And finally, on the other coast, there's a brand new XR Motion conference happening October 25th in New York City, hosted by XR Motion, which is one of the largest digital art meetups in New York City. It's a one day event with keynote speakers, fireside chats, workshops, tech demos, giveaways, prizes, happy hour, and an LED wall karaoke, which come on, that's awesome. Speakers include yours truly, Patrick Foley, AKA Patrick 4D, Michelle Cortez, and John Lepore. Regular bird tickets are available until August 31st. And that is it for this week's Motion Mondays. Don't forget to sign up for PJ's all access exclusive workshop on August 14th and check out our new quarterly pricing options. Have yourself a great week and may your client revisions be super smooth. I'll see you next time.